So let's talk about hyper-resolution based consistency uh, algorithms and uh, the methods for doing them. I'm going to use this simple example, the graph coloring problem, show you how this works. So we have here a little graph, and uh, I'm going to call this x1, x2, x3, three variables. Let's say these guys can be either white or blue. White, blue, and the same for all three of them. Now, the problem with uh, the, the filtering algorithm, when you revise any any two nodes, nothing happens, right? Because, for example, let's take x1. Let's say we revise x1 and x2. So x1 says, well, if I'm white, x2 can be blue. So that's OK. If I'm blue, x2 can be white. So that's OK. Then x1 revises against x3. He says, well, if I'm white, he can be blue. And x, the same blue, he can be white. Uh, so that's not a problem. So x1 does nothing. And the same for everybody else. They do nothing. So filtering gets us nowhere. Um, but you see, you know, intuitively, you can see that you know the problem is that x1 he needs to know uh, that you know if he sets himself to y, that that none that these two guys can set themselves to blue at the same time. So he kind of needs to know about this constraint. Uh, more generally, you know, this is a simple example, but more generally for bigger graphs, x1 would need to know about you know what is no good about the rest of the graph you know what are other things in the rest of the graph that are impossible uh, and that x1 should know about so the thing is he can get that knowledge uh, through deduction right so let me show you an example so uh, let's start we're going to use some logic notation here i'm going to say x1 x1 can be white or x1 can be blue so this is true right x1 is either white or blue right so this this little symbol if you're not familiar with it that's you know the or symbol and uh the and symbol is like an a almost without a line in the middle and this is not not and or not so here we're saying that x1 can be white or blue we also x1 also knows about this link and this link what it tells us it says look, okay it's no good not true that it can't be true that x1 is white and x2 is white that cannot be true i mean that's no good so that's not true it's also not true that x1 uh, is blue and x2 is blue right the same thing No, I forgot to make it blue, so blue, blue. Right. So these three things are true, and uh, so the there is this uh, logic rule called the hyper-resolution rule that tells us, you know, when we have stuff, these three statements like this in this form, then we can deduce that, you know, the obvious thing right now, but we can deduce that x2 is no good, have x2 is white, and x2 is black doesn't help us much because that's obviously true but uh, we can deduce that and we can do so uh, because of the form of this right so if you have these three statements uh, where the first statement is a bunch of ors you can see you know I have a bunch of ors and then the next statements are what we call no goods uh, or basically a not the not symbol followed by some things and ends and end that are ended together. Uh, then uh, and and furthermore, this is important. The, we have this match here. You know, this one is the same as this one, and this one is the same as this one. If those things are true, this one and this one, then you can take these two here and they become a no good right so then these other guys here become a no good like that or more generally and uh, so this is the hyper resolution rule the hyper resolution rule which is it's just a logical it's like modus modem ponems you know 
Uh, it's just a logic rule. It's followed by deduction. So the general form is, you know, if you have A or B or C, and then you have not A, not B, and not C, this could go on, of course, for more than that. Uh, and then, and some other stuff, it doesn't matter what's in here, let's say X, uh, Y, and Z. And, uh, you know, it could be X and uh, L. Um, then because this row matches this column, and these are ORs, and these are no goods, then all these guys here become part of the no good. So it's no good X and L and Y and Z. So that's the hyper resolution rule, right? Okay, so we can continue. The thing is, we can continue using this rule to generate more new no good. So that, that first one I did there was not, not a very good no good. Um, so uh, I'm gonna erase this guy here. So I have a little more space and we can do some things that are a bit more useful. So we can say, for example, uh, that, you know, it's no good. I mean, not, not good. We have X1, X1 is white or black. Or blue. Uh, and then we can say it's no good if x1 is white and x2 is white. And uh, then instead of using x2 again, I'm going to use this other one. It's no good if x1 is black and x3 is black or blue, however. Uh, and then, so that creates this new no good. There's no good if x2 is white and x3 is blue. So there you go. So this is more interesting. Now we can generate that one. We can similarly, if we flip uh, these around, right? I mean, if you use, um, no. if we flip the black, white, and black, uh, we can generate another no good. Uh, which it says is no good if x2 is black and x3 is white, right? And uh, so the way the, the hyper-resolution algorithm works is all these no goods, each, each node is an agent and the agents have uh, this no good uh, database, right? So they have this database of all these things that are no good, which are initially just the constraints of the problem. But then they keep using the hyper-resolution rule to generate more and more of these constraints. So now this guy has this one, and it's got this other one that it just generated. And X3 is black. Right? And using these, uh, they say once they generate this, they can send them to other agents, right? So, for example, maybe this is x1, and then x1 sends these to x2. Now x2 has these, and uh, x2 uh, knows that, you know, x2 is either white or x2 is blue. And here we have the hyper-resolution rule again. I have to go up. Um, you know, the or is in the bottom, but doesn't matter, right? So we have x2 white, x2 black, black. So if we're saying that, you know, it's no good. Uh, oh, well, this one didn't work out so well. Uh, it's no good that x3 equals white and x3 equals black, which is not what I was going for. Um, uh, what I was going for was this other one. So, is that, let me just erase this. Uh, well, actually that, that one's okay. Um, what I wanted to use is just, X, it's no good if X2 is white and X3 is white, uh, which this again just comes from the constraint between them. 
And so this is going to produce OX2. This uh, shouldn't have erased that. This is going to produce, you know, it's no good if X3 is white and X3 is white, which is just it's no good if X3 is white. So there you go. So now it produces no good. It's not good if x3 is white, and by a similar process, we can also, uh, you can do this yourself, but you can also produce, you know, it's no good if x3 equals black, and at which point your database has these two things, and so you have a contradiction, well, you have, uh, you know that there's no possible solution because there are only two possible colors, or you can, you know, to be more, even more logical, you also know that, x3 equals white or x3 is black and these three statements together form a contradiction uh, so at which point uh, you'll derive a contradiction and you'll know there's no possible solution and that, so that's basically how hyper resolution works right so in the, in the hyper resolution algorithm um, the agents right going back to the picture here each one of these guys is an agent and has this database of no goods. No goods. And uh, it keeps using the hyper resolution, you know, the hyper resolution rule right here. It's like an engine that grabs some of these no goods and creates new ones and puts them back in the database. And also the agent will send these to his neighbors as messages. And the other guys, you know, when they get them, those messages, they also add them to their database. And they do the same thing. They keep creating new no goods and sending them until either you know they arrive at a solution where there's only one possible color for each variable, or they are prove a contradiction, in which case they've proven that there is no possible solution. Now the tricky part is you know in practice, this is really mostly of just theoretical interest because actually you know the problem is this database on no goods it grows really fast right you can see even for this for two colors uh you have uh if you have n variables you have two to the n possible combinations right or more domains and you know you have three or four to the n if the domains were bigger uh so that's huge Right, and uh, the actually it's even worse than that because you can mix. You know, you can. It's not just three statements. You could have more. So, so then you're talking about choosing, say, you know, three from two to the n in order to produce a new no good, and you want to make sure that that new no good is not already in the database. Uh, and that's uh, it's hard. So people have looked at this, and you can find papers where people try to use heuristics for picking. Uh, which no goods and which ones to prove uh, but yeah it remains a little open problem